Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's podcast is having a look at 3D technology and its implementation into routine clinical orthodontic practice. It's a summary of one of the forward thinking Bjorn Ludwig's lectures. Just to recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and the Orthodontics in Summary team. It may not be 100% representative of the original lecture, though we try best to ensure that it is. Now, Bjorn started off by describing how technology has also been driven by patient demands and our patients expect to have greater outcomes with respect to their treatment. For example, adjunctive gum contouring or dental recontouring and how technology can help us achieve those new expectations patients now have. Now, Bjorn is always gives a rounded lecture and he started describing actually a low tech approach to orthodontic management. Describe missing lower pre and this has become part of Bjorn's signature lecture style where he's very humble within his presentations. So he described a hemi section of lower ease as being a simple low tech solution, allowing meso movement of the posterior teeth. And there are technological options here. TADS could be used, but there's a high failure rate in the mandible. A herps could be used as well, but there's greater complications with it. And simply just using this low tech approach allowed simple meso movement to take place of posterior teeth and allow space closure to take place the short course of orthodontics. And simply what Bjorn is saying here is that technology isn't the solution to all problems. Now Bjorn got into the technology side of things. What can be done? We well, described a case of a patient who had an impacted tooth and needed a gingivectomy afterwards. Now this is where orthodontics can intervene with some of the more aesthetic demands of our patients. A scan was taken for this particular patient. A planned gingival gingivectomy guide was created using 3D printing and 3D design. And then it became very simple to apply the laser surgery or electrosurgery to achieve the gingivectomy and the final gingival contouring. He gave an example of a patient who came in with a cant and how TADS can help with this. It's not just a preserve of orthognathic treatment. And how the use of a number of temporary anchorage devices allowed him to extrude teeth asymmetrically. I really liked how he approached this when it came to the mechanics. He simply had an aligner that was made. There was a gap in the aligner from where he aimed for the tooth to finish. Subsequently, he put his tads in, had a couple of brackets placed on the teeth and some push coil or open coil to push the teeth essentially into the aligner and the gap that he had made, giving a very controlled and predictable outcome to the extrusion that was taking place. I thought it was really interesting. The patient themselves did not want a perfect result. And I think that's so interesting how patients have moved the bars to what they want from their clinical treatment. He gave another example of a patient who had missing upper lateral incisors. And our tads here, this time we're using the palate to allow mesialization of posterior teeth to then take place. Now this was George Yarges, a paper from 2014, which looked at the mesial slider. Relatively straightforward, two tads in the palate and using some stainless steel closing springs to mesialize those posterior. Next, Bjorn went on to describe expansion and how digital planning and technology can be implemented to make this process more reliable. Starting off with planning, we can digitally decompensate the lower arch, so we know accurately how much expansion is required in the maxilla. When it comes to use of MARPI, Miniscrew Assisted Rapid Palate Expansion, we can superimpose both our CBCT onto our clinical information from the patient. So we can plan both the position of our TADS, but also the appliance itself can be planned around it. Now, Bjorn did have a word of caution when it comes to the use of MARPI, how it changes not only the palate by expanding, but also the entire mid-face can change. There are hard tissue changes taking place on the nasal complex, including widening of the alar base. So it isn't to be used for every case, and caution should be used as to when and which case we use it for. Then I went on to describe SARPI, and how this surgically assisted rapid palate expansion has a process of relieving resistance to sutures associated with the palate. Now, whether it's a diagrammatic buttress or the pterygo plates, there is a way now to be able to work out which one of those is providing the greatest resistance and if we're reducing the amount of surgery required. So what he uses is a finite model analysis to work out where the resistance lies using Fusion 360. A surgical guide is then created to relieve this greatest component of resistance and sometimes he's able to carry this out under local anaesthetic with his patients. Moving on to the next slide, he spoke about a case of CBCT and how we can use it to aid autotransplantation. Patient had a poor prognosis of incisors and required four premolar extractions. 
CBCT was used to not only assess the site, but also to create a guide for the donor site preparation when it came to putting in the premolar tooth. Beyond that, he was also able to generate a guide for the restorative management for the patient to disguise the premolar as a central incisor. Now, he also spoke about the downsides using CBCT. It is an increased radiation dose. However, this is diminishing as time is going on. The classic CBCT machines had 200 microserverts. Now they're getting down to almost less than 10 microserverts when it comes to their use in small field. Do we use fixed appliances? Do we use aligners? And is there one which favors technology more? And Bjorn was an advocate for hybrid treatment, how we can achieve different components with different aspects. And it fits in well to our patients' lives. Describe a case with fixed appliances where the patient then had to leave town. It was class two correction. So he made an aligner and using the Onyx Kef software, he was able to actually implement a class two component, almost like an acrylic associated with a twin block appliance. This allowed class two correction to take place, but now with aligners. He also gave a word of caution when it came to choosing appliances rather than choosing biomechanics. And our companies may try and convince us to use a particular type, the herd mentality, but actually we should always be steered by science and technology with ethical approach and knowledge behind it. Now technology is not without problems. And again, this is part of Bjorn's style when it comes to delivering a lecture. There are problems. He spoke about distalization, in a case we achieved a fantastic occlusal result. But actually as he distalized and he's reviewed the patient later down the line, he created posterior crowding and there's challenges with the second molars coming through. So the rules of orthodontics still remain and it's independent of the appliance. He also spoke about failures within 3D printed technology, how actually the welding points when it comes to expansion of the maxilla can be a weak point of a MRP appliance. So now he creates a one printed piece to reduce these weak points from taking place. And the final point really here was how technology can sometimes be overused. He gave an example of a case where there was a TADs that were used to create space for a canine to erupt through. But actually looking back at the case, simply derotating the molars would have achieved the two minutes of space that he needs. In conclusion, Bjorn gave a fantastic lecture. He spoke about the pros and cons of using technology and his real take home messages were to be critical about our use of technology. Just because we've invested a lot of time and effort doesn't mean we're always getting good results from it. He also spoke about how he saw the future of orthodontics involving hybrid therapy. The strength of both aligners and fixed appliances come together to give better outcomes to our patients. That's it for this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.